2000 and something, I think. Anyway, they made them uh, from date on screen to date on screen. And a uh, very successful bike. Inside here, if I can open it. That's no, not that. Look at that. Oh, hello, money. <laughs> That's money left behind to uh, for us to spend. Anyway, big enough for a helmet. Very handy. Causes the fuel tank. Turn the ignition off. Causes the fuel tank to be under this flap. I uh, have worked at petrol stations for a while and uh, in graveyard shift, and I had two people in that whole few years come in with these bikes when these flaps were not opening for them. So solenoid or cable stretching or solenoid braking or you know stopping working and this truck is going to annoy my filming anyway I've got to take the front wheel off for it's it's stiff so I've got to check the axle make sure that's been greased rear wheel's got to come off just to do the same might as well grease the whole bike and then prep it for road ready go away truck good old Yarra Rangers anyway film later. Alright, loosened off the front wheel, loosened off the lock uh, lock bolt. Very stiff, won't spin by itself. Now, two suspects, the brakes and axle. A lot of the time inside the axle here it rusts up inside, people don't grease the axle itself. Um, you know, they change the bearings, the, the bearings come uh, pre-packed with grease, so uh, from then on the axle uh, just doesn't get grease doesn't get any grease if uh, they don't touch that bit so uh, it's either the brakes not releasing once they're uh, been activated a little release valve in there usually rubber um, or yeah it's the axle itself so I've loosened everything off next I'll just take the wheel off and uh, have a little look see Alright, it's washed, um, pulled the front wheel off, the axle was fine, it was uh, still silver, had grease on it, um, bearings turned with my finger, um, it's got to be the brake caliper, not releasing, gave it a good degrees while I was there, yeah, it probably come up a hell of a lot better, but you know, it's not my bike, and I'm sure he will fuss over it a lot more than me decided rims need powder coating. The chains come up nice and clean. Anyway, stick the belly pan on and uh, stick it in for a road really. So, $800 apparently is what he paid for it. $800 does not need anything really. The seat's got a little tear in it, so I'll take that to a friend of mine and get him to recover it. Um, tires are fine, brakes are fine. Uh, all the lights work, the indicators work, the mirrors are fine. It's got a couple of scratches here or there, but uh, overall it's a very good bike for $800. So if you want a first bike, don't discount a second-hand bike. You can save a hell of a lot of money. You walk up to an insurance company and say, I'd like to insure a Suzuki across 9, uh, 2000 and whatever, and they'll say, okay, 50 bucks, because that's all they're worth. Um, and yeah, you get full experience, you're probably going to drop it. Probably. That's right, we're going to get another, another pair of these. Barring nice, cheap bike. What more can I say? Certainly things down the track, powder coat the rims. Um... I wouldn't say give it a paint, but uh, yeah, you could do a few mods on here and make it go really well. Anyway, 
That's me helping someone out get on the road. New rider. Can't remember his YouTube channel name, but I'll uh, stick a link up somewhere at the end of my finger. I'll put the link somewhere there. Kinda. Yeah. Anyway. Bye. Let's go and grab a second-hand bike. If anything, it's a good thrash-around bike. Have a good day.